Hi, everybody. Welcome to Forbes Talks. I'm here with Alex Knapp, who is Senior Editor, Healthcare Science. I'm going to toss sustainability in there, too. Alex, um, what's on your radar right now? Uh, I think the biggest story of this week is, is probably the announcement that the Lawrence National Lab achieved net energy on a fusion, fusion reaction. Yes. Well, can you unpack that for us? Because obviously fusion, I mean, if those who haven't read it, what's the big deal? We've been talking about this for so long. So is it that holy grail, we finally achieved it? it I mean, it's an important step along the way. So fusion is the same, you know, physics and chemistry that power the sun, mm -hmm. um, only obviously on a much uh, smaller scale. And one of the, the challenges with this, I mean, this is also what's behind nuclear weapons, you know, that, that that's what they cause Hooray. a fusion reaction. Yeah. <laughs> um, but in terms of energy production, the, the potential is that for a very small amount of fuel, you can power a lot of things in a way that doesn't have any negative carbon emissions. And unlike conventional nuclear reactors, there's also no radiation or Less any volatility, risk. volatility, yeah. It is, I mean, it almost sounds too good to be true. And it kind of is because it's very, very hard to do in a way where you're not putting more energy into the thing than you're actually getting out, which is what you want to and do. Is this a step in the basic science or is this actually a, a real step toward commercialization where like a year or two years from now, it could start to transform the energy picture? So, so the joke that I made with our energy editor, Chris Holman, about this is that my whole life I've been reading about fusion. So since I was a kid in the 80s and reading Omni, Fusion was always 20 years away. Mm -hmm. It was 20 years away in the 80s. It was 20 years away in the 90s. It was 20 years away in the in the noughties, which is what I like to call is the, it the 2000s. Is it the That's right. That's right. So, um, and I would say now it's going to be 10 years away for a while. Okay, well. <laughs> that is a big all step. All right, that's, that's optimism. So that's good. So we've got fusion and that, you know, the energy picture broadly is something people are thinking about. Yeah. Um, anything before we move off that, like, because we're, you know, people are, we're seeing energy prices go down. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you think is going to be sustainable or um, anything on that front? I do. And, and in fact, one interesting thing um, that's been a consequence of Putin's invasion of Ukraine is a lot of people realized how vulnerable they are and how dependent they are on these foreign supplies of energy. Entire nation of Germany, for right. example. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so what I've been hearing um, from, from folks that I talk to is that people are really accelerating towards wind, solar, geothermal, um, not only because these things have markedly come down in price. I mean, solar and wind in many places are cheaper than coal. Yeah. Um, so there's the, the money side of it. But then there's also just once you've got those solar power set up, you're not, the, it's there. You're not right. relying on anything else. You're not relying on supply chains. It, it allows for an independence and freedom that other forms of energy don't. Mm -hmm. um, and we're seeing a lot of really great advances. And, uh, you know, as we're getting better at building durable grids, uh, mm -hmm. that can take advantage of these sustainable sources, uh, I think you're definitely going to see an acceleration. We actually, and, and it's an interesting point, counterpoint. So Texas, the last couple of years, which is still, uh, although they've been adopting some sustainable uh, energies, has really been more in the traditional fossil fuel, things like that. So in they literally in their backyard. I can yeah, understand exactly. it, right? Exactly. Um, but they had a bad winter where they saw blackouts and, and other right. challenges with their energy. They saw a bad summer with rolling blackouts, rolling brownouts. Meanwhile, California, which has really pushed forward on sustainable energy, on smart grids, things like that, they had one of their hottest summers on record virtually no brownouts or blackouts because they had that reliability that you can get when you're not dependent on supply chains and you're not dependent on the energy being produced hundreds of miles away. You can just have it right there in your backyard. Which is good, but I just met a real estate developer who said that he will never again develop, can't develop affordable housing in, in the New York area, in Florida, or California. He's going to avoid them forevermore because Partly the cost base, but also just the climate risk and the risk of these black swan events such as, you know, wildfires and such. So I suppose no brownouts, but still 
climactically challenged 